Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Today we're going to be looking at two different welding methods. One's going to be the straight through or the stringer, and the other way is going to be the weave or the wave. So basically what that means is when it's straight through or a stringer, you're starting at one point. Let's say you're starting here, and then you're welding all the way straight until the end in one fell swoop. If you're doing the weave, or if you're doing the wave, or if you're doing figure eights or C's, you start at the same point, but instead of welding all the way through, you tend to do this. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you weld all the way through, and what happens when you weld in a wave. A lot of people explain that the best way to weld is that if you wave it around, it'll give you that stack of dimes look, which tends to be the case when you do something like regular MIG, or if you do something like TIG, when you weave it or you wave it, you do get that little stack of dimes look. Where things tend to change is when you're dealing with flux core specifically, things end up being a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start off with the weave first. We're gonna go ahead and start at one point and then we're gonna wave it left and right, left and right until we get about halfway through. Then we're gonna try to knock the slag off and then you guys are gonna be able to see the final result. For those curious, we are running the Yes Welder 205. The wire speed is ran at 108 and the voltage is running at 16.9. If you guys were running this on an ABCD machine, you would probably run it on B or C, depending on the model. And then you'd probably run it, if it's a one through 10 dial of speed, you're gonna to wanna to run it somewhere between three and three and a half. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're about halfway right now. Let's go ahead and take our just a regular brush and we're gonna try to knock off the slag. As you guys can see, I did a little bit of brushing but the, not all the slag is coming off. At this point, you would take your slag hammer and you'd go ahead and try to knock down the rest of the slag off until you can see the final product of the weld. So what I wanna show you is that you do get that stack of dimes look that everybody wants to go for. Again, we are welding with flux core, which means we're not using gas, and you could still get a result like this. If you were using anti-spatter spray, you could avoid getting the spatter along the sides. But let's go ahead and switch the process over. We're gonna move the, the material that we use to wave, and now we're gonna go ahead and just weld in a straight shot all the way through. All right, now let's go ahead and brush this down. Same thing, we got a little bit of slag there that we can knock off with the slag hammer and you still get that stack of dimes look. All right, so this thing is still hot, but I wanna go ahead and show you guys something. We've got the weave on the left and then we got the straight shot on the right. And what you guys are gonna be able to tell is right away the weave weld is a lot wider than the straight weld but the straight weld is a little bit more uniform than the weave weld. And once you get really good at it, you can get it uniform, but it's still gonna end up being a wider weld. Another thing you're gonna notice is that you've got a lot of heat going in on the side. You can see that this blue extends all the way to the very end over here, versus when I was welding it straight through, you don't get as much heat out on the outer edges. If you weld things like 16 gauge and 18 gauge, if you try to weave it, you're gonna be putting a lot of heat in that thinner material. Versus if you just weld it all the way straight through, you're gonna put in the minimal amount of heat and you're still gonna get plenty of penetration. The amount of spatter that comes off to the sides is right around the same. You can see that there's a little bit less on the uh, wider weld, but that doesn't have anything to do with the way it was welding. It has more to do with the amount of heat that is being put in. When you weld hotter, you tend to produce less slag, and when you weld a little bit cooler, you tend to produce a little bit more spatter. If we look at the texture of both welds, you guys are gonna be able to see, you got that little rippling effect on the weld, and then you got the little ripple effect on that weld as well. If you guys wanted to make these welds look nice, what you would have done is you would have actually sprayed this down with anti-spatter spray and then welded on top of that all the way through to the end and then you would have just cleaned off all the spatter on the sides and you would have perfectly clean looking welds. Most of us don't weld with anti-spatter or we don't care about the spatter, which is why I left the spatter on here. The main purpose of trying to weave with flux core is when you're doing things like a fillet weld, when you're trying to weld thicker metal together or when you're trying to weld thin metal to thick metal, you're going to 
do a little bit more of a weave pattern and that's just so you can have a little bit more control when manipulating the weld pool when you're welding thicker metal you want to keep that heat in the metal as much as possible in order for you to get as much penetration which is why you weave and the weaving allows you to put in more heat and more filler material for you to get a solid weld this video isn't to tell you guys that stringer is better or weaving is better. This video is mainly to show you guys that different situations call for different techniques. In this particular situation, you'd be better off running it straight. If we were doing something with like thicker metal or we were doing a fillet weld, then you'd probably run this so you can get a nice thick bead all the way across in a corner joint. That's all for today. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher.